My name is Kerry Risco. I'm the Step On Tour Guide for Leader Tours. I live in Saskatoon, so why do I continue to come back to Leader and, and work with Leader Tourism on these tours? Well, that's, that's a great question. I don't know, I guess I'm just willing to help out. I'm willing to try and make the tours successful. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see them succeed. I want to see Leader as a community continue to thrive. And uh, if I can continue to do a little bit, why not? There you are. Good morning. How you doing? Good, I brought you some bear pepperoni. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's hard to see, imagine a high point of land in this area, it all looks kind of flat. But if you look at it, as we, as we approach it, you'll see it on the right-hand side of the road. It is on a bit of the highest point of land. One of the stops we make in the morning of the tour is Blumenfeld Church. It's an old Catholic church. Uh, it was built in 1915, officially called St. Peter and St. Paul Church. It's just a landmark of the area. It's uh, culturally significant, you know, because it represented Catholic churches pre-Vatican II. And what that means is the altar for the Catholics, the altar was set up in a different fashion back then compared to what it is today. This was built in the height of the Depression as a call for a plea for rain, like when it was the, really the dirty 30s there. Right. And so they would have outdoor masses. This is a real sandy area and very little rock on the, on the farm field. So these rocks, they say they had to collect them from a distance, a radius of 10 miles. For those interested in religious history, you know, it's, it's something to behold in Saskatchewan for sure. So one of the more popular spots that we uh, include on our tour, that we would be remiss if we did not, would be the Great Sand Hills. It is not the Sahara Desert. We've got to make that clear. Less than 1% of the Great Sand Hills is actual sand dunes. We come in on the Straw Trail. Tourism helped establish a parking lot to keep people you know, contained, if you will, and then the local ranchers allow access to the sand dune. So you're gonna climb on a sand dune, you gotta feel the sand between your toes. There's no doubt about that. But secondly is, if you don't, you're gonna have your shoes full of sand. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a very fine sand and, and you actually, you know, in parts of it, you actually sink. Yeah, you can see the open dunes. You're gonna see active rolling sand dunes, but it isn't complete sand. It's, it's really, you know, just large native prairie. Uh, the largest continuous prairie in southern Canada. So the people that come on the bus tour, I uh, really enjoy when they're awestruck or that they say, wow, this was worth it. It's so cool that you look around and you can see trees and growth, but under about three inches of growth, there's more of that sand and it's there for miles and miles and miles. So it's, uh, I found that really interesting. Our next stop with the flush toilets is the, is the Scepter uh, Museum. So it's called the Great Sand Hills Museum and Interpretive Center. But Scepter, when they built, when this, the school was closed, they said, well, we got to do something with this school. So they developed a museum.
I think that women probably went through a lot of hell just to get <laughs> a little bit of beauty back in the, well, I don't know what that was, I, did, I can't remember if that was the 20s or the 30s. Gertie Hale was the uh, lead uh, leader of the pack, if you will, to uh, get the museum, and I'm sure she had a committee, and it was just somebody's great idea. Look at the wasps in this. this Let's pick each classroom to feature a different theme, and, and that's what they've done. You know, one classroom is the doctor's office, another classroom is the, you know, the church and the school, and, and on it goes. And to have a theme in each classroom, it just works well. Kerry brings a lot to our tours. He just knows so much. I try to remember facts, but <laughs> I'm too busy looking out the window. So he knows the dates, he knows the names of the plants and the animals and the history. Kerry, uh, he, he was a good community person when he lived in, in Leader. He's done lots of good stuff and uh, very, very knowledgeable when he does all the tours and everything too. I think he just loves, he loves this area, he's told me, and uh, it's a passion that he wants to bring other people into this sort of ecosystem to see the value of it and to protect it. Well, from 1990 to 2007, I was a conservation officer here, and then uh, I took a job in Saskatoon, a promotion in Saskatoon, but uh, my family continued to live here five years more, so I essentially commuted for five years to come back to the family. But yeah, when I moved to Leader in 1990, I just got engaged and uh, welcomed, and the community welcomed my family, and it was, and like I say, I just want to give back, you know. Well, Leader, prior to World War I, the name of the community was called Prussia. It was first settled in 1907, incorporated as a community in 1911. Community is a very German-Russian. So when World War I broke out, of course, the, the name Prussia didn't sit well. Local people were worried that the rest of the province or the rest of the country might view them as German and siding with the enemy. Let's decide to rename the town. Right? We're gonna rename our community. So they held a contest. And it was a young girl, school-age girl, who uh, was at the train station. And the newspaper came in daily on the train. And it's the same newspaper the leader gets today. And it's called the Regina Leader Post. She submitted the name Leader. And that was the one chosen by the community uh, forefathers of the day. So again, when it was called Prussia, the streets all had German overtone names. So there was. Hanover and Hamburg and Berlin and uh, all German names. They renamed the town, but they didn't want to undertake to rename every single street, so they just, using the unimaginative notion, they just named all the streets that run uh, north-south as avenues, 1st, 2nd, 3rd Avenue, and the ones that ran east-west as street, 1st Street, 3rd Street, 2nd Street. running out of room, so they've got like four boys getting married, so they're putting new houses here for them. Well, we're at the estuary Hutterite colony. Okay, so one dress red makes the venues? Well, you know, Hutterites are a mystery because they live in a colony. They have their unique dress. People will see them in Swift Current, for example, or Saskatoon, and. You know, they know they're Hutterites, but they don't know anything about them. And so the tour stop here gives them an insight into what living on the colony is all about. The dairy barn is something that's fascinating for sure. Every cow's got a computer chip. It measures the amount. And they said for five to seven days, they got to lead them in. They get food while they're being milked. And so then they say, oh, there's food there. I go get milked. And then they get pushed out the same way.
One of our stops, also on the tour, is Sagebrush Studios, owned and operated by Dean and Fran Francis. It's nestled just off of the South Saskatchewan River. Dean Francis, uh, 1996, bought himself 80 acres of land. He decided he was going to make it his passion, an art studio, art gallery. He ended up buying three old country churches, uh, some of them he got for a dollar, if you will, and uh, moved them there, restored these churches to their original glory. He's also planted like thousands and thousands of trees. His grounds are just teeming with wildlife, with birds and rabbits and things like that, and uh, an unbelievable place to, to experience. Dean's a skilled artist. He sells a lot of paintings. In the summertime, he's all outdoors photographing and experiencing his passion for nature. And then in the winter, when it's cold, he's painting. His paintings reflect what he's seen during the summer. So yeah, let's go right up to the highway. There was over 1,200 people lived here. And when we get there, you're gonna have a hard time to imagine. My hope for the leader tours is that they will continue. I'm more than willing to continue to help them out. I hope that we can get more people engaged. And certainly if there was enough demand, we can have more than two tours a summer. So my hope for the tours is that people come to appreciate the leader area. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com.